So um, some tips for the FRQs. Um, don't write until you read everything. Read all parts of the question and then start writing. Um, if you wait, um, if you start writing before you've done that, then, um, you know, it's not going to help. You're not going to, um, usually going to struggle a little bit. Um, and then answer the easiest FRQ first and the hardest last, um, because you only get 90 minutes, right? Um, so answer the one that you're like, oh my God, I got this one. Do that one first. And then the one where you're like, eh, I don't really know how to do this. Do that last. That way you're not struggling through that one. And um, that way you're not struggling through that one. And, uh, you know, you don't get time to do the, the one that you're really, really confident about. And then try not to spend more than any more than 22 minutes a question. Um, so like the FRQs that you have for class, um, I would try to like just sit with it and maybe add a timer and set it for 22 minutes and see how far you get. And then like, you know, as you go through the semester, hopefully you get a little faster at them. Um, and then um, underline all the important verbs. The test makers are starting to make those in bold, but just in case, underline them like identify versus describe. Um, so identify would be like, um, you know, agriculture, and then describe would be like how agriculture relates to whatever they're asking you about. Um, so if you just identify and they ask you to describe, you're not going to get any points. Um, and then answer each part in order and label them. So um, don't just make like this huge paragraph or this long essay about it. Part A, your answer. Part B, your answer. Part C, your answer. And that makes it easier for the reader to grade it and to give you your points. And that's what you want to do, right? You want to make it easy for the person that is giving you the points. Because if they can't find your answer, they're reading tons and tons and tons of FRQs um, a day. So you don't want them to have, they're not going to spend like 20 minutes trying to, you know, struggle through your FRQ. They're just going to go zero points and go on to the next one. Um, when you have to do math, show your work. Um, Use scientific notation and dimensional analysis, those conversions, um, com kind of like where you, you do like this, like you did in chemistry, um, and you'll write something here, something here, something here, um, that kind of thing, or, or where you have like a fraction, and you have stuff, you know, like, like that. Um, that's the conversions. Do that kind of stuff for the math. And then if your math skills are lacking, now is the time to practice, right? Now is the time to practice when you get math FRQs. If you want some extra FRQs with math on them, um, let me know and I can pull some out for you. Well, I'll tell you which ones they are and then you can get them from the um, College Board website. Um, so then you get more practice. Um, some other things. Um, describe means more than identify. If it says describe and you only identify, you won't get points, like I said earlier. Economic is different from environmental. Economic um, usually refers to money, right? So if you um, if you're talking, if they ask you for like an economic reason for something, you want to talk about money. And then um, if you are talking about environmental, that's like um, an easy way to think of that is like outside, right? Like animals, plants, that kind of stuff, right? Hate that my slate's not working because it's not easy to write with a mouse, but whatever. Um, if you don't know all parts of the question, answer the parts you know, you can get partial credit. So, you know, you could just start a part C or leave a space for part one and you could always go back to it. And then you're supposed to write complete answers in paragraph form, but don't waste time writing stuff from the question. So, for example, um, sometimes when I get FRQs, people like to give like a whole bunch of flowery background information or whatever. We don't actually, um, they, they're not going to read that. And like when I get that flowery background information, I totally just ignore it till I get to the part where the answer is because that's the only part that gets graded, right? So you don't need to add like all this extra stuff. And then uh, another thing is that um, if they ask you, if they say like describe two things and you describe three, they're only going to read the first two. If the first one is really bad and it's not a good answer, they're not going to go on to that third one. They only grade the first two. And it's like the third one doesn't even exist. Like they are instructed not to read the third thing that you write. So don't waste time write, writing it because it's, it's totally a waste of your time. 
You only get 22 minutes of question. If they ask you for two things, just write two things. Um, anything else is just is just a total waste. And then they're not going to read any bulleted lists. So, you know, you can't just put a bulleted list. You're supposed to write in sentences and things like that. Um, don't be too general. So don't just say, oh, it causes pollution. Tell me what type, type of pollution does it cause? Air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, that kind of thing. Do not say is bad for the environment. I get this all the time. I get this on discussion postings. I get this on FRQs. People just say, oh, um, burning fossil fuels is bad for the environment. Yeah, I know. A fifth grader could tell me that. My mom could tell me that. Even my dad, who's like the most super hardcore Trump supporter, could tell me that burning fossil fuels is bad for the environment, right? You need to tell me exactly how burning fossil fuels is bad for the environment, right? They release CO2, which is a greenhouse gas, which then contributes to global warming and can cause climate change, right? That is an AP environmental science answer. Bad for the environment is, is like a fifth grader um, answer. Um, how many sentences should you write to, answers, to answer the FRQ question? So I like to say like as many as you need. For a describe, I would put like one to three. Um, if it's an identify, you could just, you know, you could just say, agriculture or like a um like if they say name two primary air pollutants you could say like nox and so2 or whatever and those would be your primary air pollutants um so it's just it's it's a describe is going to have more sentences than a um a identify um and then like i said this is what i said earlier um only give the number of responses asked for if they ask for two give two if they ask for three give three they won't read anything after that. So it's it's a total waste of your time to write more than they ask for. And they're not going to go on to that third one if the first if one of the first two isn't very good. Um, they're literally not allowed to read the third one. Um, don't erase, right? Just just put a line through your answer. Um, the reader will not read anything that you cross out. Um, they're really supposed to ignore it. I've had students that have wanted to, but they weren't brave enough to write like um, oh, reader, I think you're such a wonderful person, or oh, you're a terrible person, blah, 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 you know, something silly, um, and then cross it out with like one line, there's just put one line through it, and just for, just for, you know, giggles, but they've never done that, and they would never know what the reader thought of it anyway, so I don't really see the point, but they always talk about doing that. Um, write neatly. If the reader can't read your handwriting, they can't give you credit, and they're not going to sit there and like, um, piece it together or like I might spend more time trying to read your FRQ than they will because um, they literally have hundreds to read every day. And then um, when you're working on an FRQ, when you're um, kind of preparing for the exam, make sure that you have a few widely applicable laws in your back pocket because um, there's a few FRQs that will say like um, name a, a piece of legislation that would apply to this whatever. Um, so like the Endangered Species Act, anything that involves animals, you could say Endangered Species Act. Anything that involves air, you can say Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, Safe Drinking Water Act, stuff like that. You don't need to memorize like the super vague act of 1722, right? Just know a few widely applicable laws that you can kind of put down for um, lots of different things. That way you're not trying to memorize a ton of different random um, laws or acts.